I'm Darren Fly, and you're watching the Three Count Podcast. Fashion, Welcome fashion. everybody to another edition of the Three Count Podcast presents Now in the Ring and I'm your host Clifford Red Dog. Well, that's right, the man that leads you up this mountain called wrestling. You could call me your Sherpa, you should be calling me your Sherpa, but it's never about me. It's about who's entering the ring because like every good Sherpa, you gotta have a Sherpa who's been there, done that, and can do it more efficiently than you can. And so our person comes to us from MPW, AWE, EHF. Legacy Pro Wrestling, GLWA, HCW, PWK. He is a speeding bullet that just hasn't hit yet. He is Darren Fly. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on the show. Oh, yeah, dude, definitely. I know, like, I put it out. I was just like, yo, I'm looking for something. Got some people that, that are looking to hop on and... You know, your name came up a few times, so I was like, all right, well, we're, really? definitely gonna grab, we're definitely going to grab this person and, uh, you know, we'll approach him. So, what's up? What's up? <laughs> that's awesome. I'm very honored. I'm like, that's awesome. I'm really happy to hear that. Yeah, man. So, let's get to start off first, man. Who is who is Darren Fly? Man, Darren Fly, he's an ongoing great guy. He's a high flyer, charismatic, energetic. All about heart and wrestling. Okay, that bad. bad. That's he's cool also um, he's also the prince of flip. He's all about his flips as well. <laughs> I like it though. I like it. So you know, I saw like you had been on for about three years. Is right? Is that sound all right? What's that? Uh, the can uh, the mic's kind of being a little wacky. Uh, I said it sounds like you've been a part uh part of like the sport here for about three years. Correct. Uh yeah. Yep, that's correct. So, what brought you in? the The mic is kind of acting weird still. Oh, mine is. Yeah, I can't. I can barely understand you. All right, hold on a second. Let me see. Is this better? Yep, there we go. It's back to being fixed. Okay, okay cool. So we'll kick it in uh, in three, two, one. So it says like you know, you've been in the business for about three years now. Is that about right? Yes, that is correct, sir. So what brought you into the business? What brought me into the business? Uh, it was actually my father. Um, one, one night, I want to say at age four, I was sitting there watching it with them, and I just fell in love with the business, everything. I was watching Hogan. I was watching Andre the Giant, Macho Man, you name it. I was watching days, like, back back in the day of wrestling. <laughs> so it's clear that your inspiration does come from, like, a lot of high flyers. So I'm curious, like, what what high flyers have inspired you to want to, to like, pull their, from their movesets? Um... Ray, Mis Ray Mysterio, especially that's a number one. Uh, RVD, Rob Van Dam, he's one of my uh, favorites of all time. Jeff Hardy, Ultima Dragon, uh, Eddie Guerrero, just okay. to name a few. I like the pull from Ultima Dragon because we may or may not have had a guest on here at one time who talked about a, a match that happened one time, right? in you and u.s soil right on mm -hmm. north american soil anyway in this match was ultimo dragon uh tjp uh i can't recall the other person that was running with him at the time but also a small young up-and-coming lion known as okada <laughs> yeah so we always talk about this match and like just to be around at that time i was like just been one of the greatest things to ever see. 
Yeah, that's awesome. I, I, I love Okada. I love TJ Perkins. I've seen him work live. So that's that was awesome to see. Yeah, so uh, so talk to us, man. I got to ask, man, because it's one of my favorite questions to ask every single person who comes on this show. What's the worst bump you've taken? Oh, gosh, the worst bump. I've taken some pretty gnarly ones. But I think the worst bump I've ever taken was a just just a normal choke slam. Just a normal choke slam. <laughs> Those are the worst, man. I'm not gonna lie. Those are awful. And power bombs, I've gotten better with them, but uh they can suck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm all too familiar with somebody who's blown a choke slam spot and also a choke slam bump before. So, yeah, our, uh, our longtime viewers will definitely know like that's something that's happened a few times. <laughs> yeah, not the best bump. <laughs> no, and the funny thing is, is, like, I'm a huge fan of taking choke slams. I just like I became a big fan of them. I just love like I don't know. I, I, I feel like when you take a choke slam bump versus like just a regular bump, they hurt about the same. Like there's not a real suck to it. Unless you're doing yeah. like a superplex off the top rope, then then there's a lot of suck to that. <laughs> uh superplex, I don't think I think that's I'd rather take that off the top rope than the choke slam, to be honest. <laughs> like no joke, man. I've I've taken the Tower of Doom spot. Like I've done that and that's felt amazing. But when it comes to the choke slam, I've gotten way better with the choke slams. But, yeah, that's the worst bump. <laughs> so I'm kind of curious, man. Oh, and then what's one of the hardest hits you've taken? Hardest hits? Hmm. Jason Page, he's actually gave me a gnarly super kick to the face. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> he definitely has a leg on him. Nice. It's funny because, like, I know somebody else who's a part of this podcast who's been known for their super kicks as well and sometimes connecting a little too much. <laughs> Man, um, even uh, Isaiah Moore, he has really good chops. Like, no joke, you will feel them in your chest. Your chest will sink. <laughs> <laughs> Bet, bet, bet. All right, man. So normally when you get done with a match or, you're, you know, you have you have like those pre-rituals, but I'm more wondering about the post-rituals. So, like, do you have like a post-match snack or like a post-match meal? Um, No, necessarily. Not necessarily. Uh, I try to get water. That's the, probably the first thing I try to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's pretty much pretty much it. I really don't. Uh, if there's food there, I definitely try to get a uh, protein base, like chicken or something like that. Okay. I know for me, like one of my favorite things to do is like get into like a, like a hot spot. Right. So I try to go to like in, in over in Maryland, right. We have like Wawa's and then you get to Pennsylvania and you have sheets and all that. So we always stop at like a gas station and try to grab like something there. That's like one. Obviously, I get something kind of nutritious, so we definitely do, like, a whole, like, grilled chicken breast. And I say we as in the guys I usually drive with. And then, yeah. obviously, we have to have something kind of gnarly as well. So, you know, mozzarella cheese sticks are, like, always on the menu. <laughs> Heck, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. I love mozzarella. All right, man. Well, let's talk about this. So, uh, what's, like, one of the hardest lessons you've had to learn in the sport so far? Oh, man. <laughs> That's a good question. Um... The hardest lesson. Um, not being so hard on yourself. You're, you're your biggest uh, critic. And you have to work with that because you can't always be too hard on yourself. You got to give yourself some credit. You got to be proud of yourself at some times. If you don't, it's just going to mess you up mentally and uh, physically. It's, it's going to definitely, it's going to show when you're out in the ring. I, it's it's cool that you're able to like kind of like understand that and interpret that and be like yo you can't be like hypercritical on yourself. I had someone I just literally gave advice to earlier today, who was talking about if they ever find themselves being like a little overly conceited to let them know and to deflate them. And I was like, dude, like it's fine sometimes. So like I don't let your head swell up a little bit as long as you recognize that you're doing it and then just like tee yourself back down and just be like, hey, but we got work to do. And I was like, but you got to enjoy the journey that you're on because like. Sometimes you might hit like a spot that you just, you've you worked on so many times and just didn't get it. But then finally you get it that one time you're like, 
this is amazing. Right. So, like, yeah. take, take the time to enjoy the journey that you're on because it's very important. Yeah, I agree. It took me a long time to like understand that. Um, just like it, like a couple couple of years, it took me to understand that and take a criticism. I, w I I could take it, but I couldn't. If that makes sense. Yeah. So you were you were you were kind of like you were just hypercritical. So like you were already critical on yourself. Someone else give you something, and you're just like focused on that one thing. Because like, yeah, you know, I'm sure I'm sure you probably ran into it where someone will give you like ten great things that you did. And then that one, that one negative, that's the only thing that sticks out in your mind. Yeah, I'm a big overthinker. And my thing I've tried working on, like, while I'm in the ring and outside the ring, try not to overthink as much. Have fun with it, you know? Yeah, it was something that my, even my trainer was telling me, too. Um, he was just like, it's not a matter of, like, if you screw up. It's just when you do. And, like, I feel like when he said that to me, it, like, released, like, something inside me. Because I was like, yo. I don't have to be overly crit critical. I can just live in the moment and just breathe the moment that I'm having. So, like, some people will we'll call a match, like, in the back, right? We'll use that mm -hmm. usually do a beginning and a middle or the beginning and the end. And then we'll call, like, the double down just so that we know, like, hey, oh, this is exactly where we are in a match. But everything else, man, we just go out there and we just call on the fly and just have so much fun doing it because yeah. you get a chance to kind of hear and breathe and feel what the audience is is feeling and it's i love that i love that rush that you get off of it i'm glad you uh love that rush man like that's an that's an awesome thing yeah so i'm just curious man like what's um what's what's uh what's some advice that you would give to like upcoming wrestlers oh uh, advice if you're in this business you gotta stay with the business you have to go to the bad shows and you have to go to the good shows. You gotta learn. You learn from every show you're at. I I love that. That is awesome. Like, I've I've learned, I've definitely learned a lot from the bad shows and the good shows. They always give you something. You notice something. And I've also would tell any of the younger kids. I would tell them, eyes open, mouth shut. Mm. That's then, what I was told by my trainer. <laughs> So I'm kind of curious as well, man, like seeing that you've been around, you've kind of been through some different, different feds and stuff like that. I just need one do and one don't of the locker room. Uh, what do, uh, do shake everybody's hands when you get into the arena as every person should do. That's the way to show respect. And, um, what don't to do, don't go in there cocky knowing just thinking you know everything because you everybody doesn't know anything and everything you always can learn something i believe and that belief would be right <laughs> I guess yeah. if, you be honest. Uh, <laughs> if you figured it all out you, you gotta go you gotta get yeah out of like it. yeah you, you're there's no point for you to be here you know yeah so i'm curious man like what's the what's the goals what's the goals for 2022 for darren fly Man, the goals. Uh, I have a couple. I would love, definitely would love to hold some gold, some tag belts uh, with my uh, tag partner, uh, Nate Cobain. We are a twist and flip. I would, uh, my other goals is uh, definitely more expand. I want to get more. I've gone to Wisconsin. That's been an awesome learning experience. I would love to go uh, Ohio or down to Texas. I, I just want to explore the whole world and get as as much information I can get, you know? No, that's a great goal. I know, like, even for me, like, it's, you know, I've, I wrestle out at a DMV and in New Jersey, and I'm trying to go further out, like, whether I'm going to North Carolina, I'm going out to Massachusetts or Connecticut, out west, we're trying to go to Ohio, trying to hit oh, Michigan, trying to get to Illinois, trying to get to all those places, man. So, yeah, I definitely feel where you're coming from when it's like, Heck hey, yeah. expand, expand, expand. What, uh, what state would you like to wrestle? Like, what's your big state you would like to wrestle? Uh, you know what? What's weird, man, is that the state – I have two, right? To be mm -hmm. fair, one of them is my home, my home state, right? So I would love to wrestle back in the state of Nebraska just one time, or Heck just a, yeah. a few times. It's just it would just be fun. Um, and the other one is my second home, my other home from home, where all my uh, Kanes and Wahinis all stay at in the islands of Hawaii. So that's where I. Oh, would be. okay, that's awesome to hear, man. Heck yeah, I believe yeah. you make it there. 
Oh yeah, I definitely, I, I definitely have some connections to kind of go a little bit of everywhere if I wanted to. <laughs> awesome, yeah. You just gotta get those connections. You meet the right people, get on the right path. Hell yeah. So, man, listen, like these are all like the heavy hitting questions that I do have, but I gotta bring on, you know, the second best segment of the Three Count Podcast. If you're mm-hmm. wondering what the first is, it's the Red Dogs Power Rankings that you can find every Sunday on our debate show. But this is the three count podcast, 10 count questions. And Darren, this is how it works. I'm going to fire off 10 questions at you rapid fast. And whatever okay. your answer, that's your answer. All righty. All right. So we're going to put on the imaginary timer for added pressure. <laughs> Bing. And here we go. Smackdown or Raw? Smackdown. Favorite color? Blue. Marvel or DC? Marvel. Favorite movie? Toy Story. PlayStation or Xbox? Damn. <laughs> PlayStation. <laughs> Favorite submission? Ooh. Sh- Sharpshooter. A Sonic or Mario? Mario. Favorite podcast? Favorite podcast. The Joe Rogan podcast. Let's go. Uh, nominate one person that you want to see on this podcast. Hmm. Isaiah Moore. Okay. And the last but not least, my favorite question to ask every single person that comes on this show. Favorite curse word. <laughs> Fuck or bitch. Hey, not you, you, you listen, man. A good F word is all that's needed in this life. Like, just tell people that. <laughs> Honestly, you gotta let you just gotta let it slip. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so listen, man, like all of our um that's all my heavy hitting questions. Those are all my questions for you. So just let our listeners and our viewers know where they can find you. Uh, you can find me on my Facebook, on my uh, shoot name, Devin Stallings. Um, my Instagram, Darren Fly one And uh, I'm going to work on getting a Twitter. So work with me. Work with me. But that's where you can find me for right now. <laughs> you know, Twitter wrestling is is a place of beauty and toxicity, but it is amazing to be a part of. <laughs> Man, I've seen. I'm, I'm scared. I'm a little scared about it. Bet. But you guys know what that means. Cause like, he's giving you all of his handles. So, like, every good part of a wrestling match, we got to take it home. Because this is the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering the Ring. And like I said, I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller. That's right. The man that leads you up this mountain called wrestling. And by now, you should be calling me your Sherpa. But like every other, like every good Sherpa, you got to have someone who's been there, done that, and can do it more efficiently than you can. That's why it's never about me. It's about who's in the ring. And you see right next to me, Darren Fly is here in the hot seat with me. So you guys know what to do. Tune into the next episode and be there. Or you just wait for this episode to end. You wait for that outro. And then you choose another episode to listen to. Peace. What's going on, Three Count Nation? I'm Clifford Red Dog Miller with the catchphrase. But what I really want to do right now, go to twitter.com, right? Go over there, find us at the Three Count underscore pod, give us a follow, give us a like, give us a comment. We want to talk to you guys. Go to IG at the Three Count Pod, give us a like, give us a follow, leave us a comment. We want to interact with you. Go to youtube.com, give subscribe, turn the bell on, turn on notifications, leave a comment. We want to talk to you. Go to anger.fm forward slash the three count podcast. And in there, you can leave us a message and we will talk to you. Basically, what I'm trying to tell you is that we want to talk to you. We want to have fun with you guys. And we love listening to what you guys have to say. Also, one thing I need you to do for me, the three count podcast also has merchandise. Oh, at pro forward slash the three count pod. Please go buy our t-shirts. We love you guys and we hope you love us too. So. Show us some support, please.